Hey guys, I'm LB. We are back playing this is the, the Turing Test. Center. You can check on the crew status from here. So, I realized after last episode that I uh, completely missed this. There's a bunch of audio logs here. Let's listen to these. Tom, start recording. I am always recording, Daniel. The day is January the 6th. My watch says it's 2.30 on Earth. Here we are, members of the human race, standing on Jupiter's moon Europa. I am Captain Daniel McLean. I'm joined here by the rest of my team. It is our intention to make this moon our home and investigate life on this planet. Man's curiosity and appetite for discovery will continue to change our world for the better. Inspiring. And might I add my congratulations to you all. Here it is. Beautiful, isn't it? What makes this one more remarkable than the others? The way it attaches itself to other organisms. Its behavior is very abnormal. It seems to form a symbiotic relationship with most life forms. How do you mean? Do you want me to dumb it down? I know what it means. What does it do? It attaches itself to almost anything living, but it's not parasitic. It's quite alien. We're trying to figure out what effect it has on life forms. So. I think he was saying it attaches itself to other organisms, but it's not parasitic. Hmm... How do you know it's not parasitic? Mikhail, you seem distant. Do I? Yes. What's wrong? What's wrong, Mikhail? Mikhail, what's wrong? Are you listening, Mikhail? Are you able to hear? Uh-oh. <laughs> I think we have a classic sci-fi incident of the thing attached to him and altered him. I was talking to the ISA. They don't know what to do with this. The magnitude of the discovery. We should send samples back to Earth. We need to get this to a better lab. Me and Sochi are having trouble making enough clones. We're gonna run out of the necessary resources to continue studying the organism 119. They're calling for a grounding of all Europa transport until they get your report. Seriously? Yeah. That's rather drastic. So... I was talking to the I. Uh... That's interesting. So, like, something bad happened, but their response to them grounding all traffic, they say that that's rather drastic. So, obviously, it's not too bad, right? Is that like a... <laughs> Is that the the mouse input device? Wow, that's uh, interesting. All right, so we already explored this area last episode. If you uh, if you missed last episode, which was episode zero, we are currently in episode one, the second episode. Yeah, I start counting at zero in case you don't know. Can we can we actually read these if we get close enough? No, I'd have to. Let's uh. Turn up the graphics temporarily, just to, uh, be able to read this. There we go. Now you can read stuff. <laughs> I'll do this whenever we have to read. You can pause the video and read to your heart's content. Had no childhood interest in space travel, instead, he spent his youth studying the life in Lake... something near his hometown. Went on to study marine biology! Ooh, that was what my sister was interested in doing before she changed her mind. And chemistry at, uh, university. After the tragic death of his wife, he disappeared into his work, re-emerging 11 years later as a preeminent exobiologist. Interesting. Is it just me, or do these look like... Like, the- the faces... aren't actually in these suits. I don't know, it just doesn't look right to me. Losing her parents at a young age... She was- Oh wait, this is my character! Losing her parents at a young age, Ava Turing was sent to military engineering school. Shortly after graduating, she enlisted in the U.S. Navy and trained as a pilot. Due to her exemplary service record and willingness to leave Earth for extended periods of time, Turing was recruited by the ISA. 
On the exploratory mission to Jupiter's Europa, Turing's role aboard the Fortuna is engineer and vehicle officer. Cool! That's our character. That's who we're playing as. Father died of cancer at a young age. This motivated him to become a doctor in hopes of helping others. Worked as a medical doctor in Russia for three years before working for the UN as a doctor in crisis. His role in the Upper mission is chief medical officer. He's the one who seemed distant. Yeah, that's... Mikhail. I thought it was- I thought it was just a weird way to say Miguel, but no, that's, that's his name, actually, is pronounced that way, because it's spelled that way. So yeah, the doctor seemed distant. Huh. An identical triplet. His father is an electrician, and his mother is a mechanical engineer. Following in his mother's footsteps, he trained as an engineer. Triplets became famous as Chris and Dan took to space, leaving their brother, Peter, behind. Although an accomplished engineer, his place on this mission was also partly due to the ISA being interested in the long-term effects of space travel. Test results will be compared to those of Peter McLean. Sarah Brooke's parents are both scientists. In her teenage years, she was sent to an English public boarding school. Brooke is one of the most eminent exobiologists of the 23rd century for her informative work on the Mars Discovery Project. She was specially requested to be part of the Europa ground team. Though only 28 years old, Sarah has touched the surface of two planetoids, and spent more time on alien soil than any other member of mankind, except the Mars team. <laughs> wow, the lore in this game is awesome. Here's the captain. Oh, what the? Huh? The screen is just broken now, we can't read about the captain. That's interesting. Alright, well we should probably get going with some puzzles. Built using thousands of tons of resources, shipped to Europa through an interplanetary network. See, I wonder if this is not US English, and that's why some things are misspelled. Europa's base is built beneath Europa's surface, buried in Sarah Macula's ice. Its modular nature allows it to be reconstructed according to the mission's needs at any time. Drilling platform. Oh. Europa's drilling platform is the largest outside of Earth. At 40 meters high, it is one of the tallest machines on any moon. The drill has bored to a depth of over 4 kilometers and recovered over a million kilograms of material from deep underneath the surface. This level of extraction is made possible by utilizing the Ashimia Electric Fusion Reactor. Ashiyama, sorry. Anything else? Nope, it just loops around. Alright, well, unless there's anything else over here on the other side... So, we came from here... Where is there to go? Not- not there. Looks like up there is our next destination. This game- I believe this game has seven chapters at least, because that's what the achievements go up to. Oh, we get our gun back! And the loading screen! Achievement unlocked! Chapter 1! Well, there you have it! <laughs> I was wondering why we didn't get that achievement last episode, but it's because we didn't complete the chapter, technically. I thought that was just like a central hub area, I'm glad I read all that stuff. I- I thought we were gonna be able to come back. I'll put like an annotation or something at the beginning of the episode to let people know where to skip to if they're not interested in the story.
You know, I've never seen such a smooth loading bar. Like, usually you just get stuck somewhere and then it jumps suddenly to the end. Like right now. It's because it's really hard to predict how long different things take to load. I'm a programmer, I know about these things. Oh, look at that! Here we go. What condition should I expect to find the ground crew in? Daniel went missing days ago. Chris is presumed dead. We are expecting to find Sarah, Mikhail, and Sochi in a stable condition. Chris is dead? He was involved in an accident. Oh, okay, so at least in the same place, we just take this with us. That door does not open, it seems. So, we've already got dead people. As if it wasn't obvious enough. And this... Looks like an AND gate, right? Yeah, that's an AND gate. Oops. I keep thinking that's a toggle, like the Talos principle, but nope. Ah, we've got another one of these. Alright. Alright, we can do it now. We're still warming up. We're getting there. Oh. Could we take a more direct way to the ground team? Unfortunately, there is not a direct route. The base is buried under ice to protect it from the radiation of space. Similar to the Mars base. Similar. Europa's base is slightly deeper into the surface. There is more radiation present from solar events on Mars. But Mars's surface is denser than that of Europa. So you see that? That is a magnetic thing that we're gonna put that there to pick up with. So we can't- we can't take it up here ourselves. Oops. That's- that's- I'm not used to pressing E to climb ladders, I'm used to just walking into the ladder. Oh, right, I gotta hold down E. There we go. I have reduced the frame rate from 30 frames per second to 25 frames per second in the recording, so hopefully there will be less frame rate stuttering. Let's see, what do we want to do with this guy? Oh, yeah, duh. That would make a lot of sense, actually. Just want to get him over there. Oh, we could have put it here as well, that would have worked too. Eh, close enough. That's interesting, so you can stop on the ladder, just like in Talos Principle. Okay, what did we want to do with this? Oh, oh, <laughs> did not even see this over here. So this one, you know, the other one we could take the energy from, but this one it looks like the energy is, uh, in just permanently or whatever. Maybe it's part of the rail. I don't know. Any either way, there's no orb that we can take out. Oh my gosh, what am I, what am I doing? These la ladders are hard. Okay, let's just all admit ladders are hard, especially for robots like me. <laughs> okay, what are their chances of survival here? Oxygen. The food stores, waste management. Everything seems to be in order. There was a small problem with the food stores, but the crew fixed that up. We successfully transitioned over to a sustainable small artificial ecosystem a year ago. Growing fruit and vegetables. It helps boost morale, amongst other things. The crew members could hypothetically survive here for their whole lifetimes. Interesting. So something I've been wondering, I was talking to Nock about this. You know, Tom told us that he can't solve these tests because these are Turing tests, supposedly. But so far, these are just basic logic tests. I'm not really sure how a robot wouldn't be able to solve these. If anything, these tests are geared more towards robots than humans. And I'm not sure if that's just a flub in the story or if that's actually Tom deceiving us or whatever. And surely Ava Turing would know what the Turing test is because, you know, it's in her name and people would have, you know, mentioned it to her and she'd look it up and be like, oh, that's interesting. She should know what the Turing test is. She might even be a descendant, but we don't know that. 
can we take... I don't think there's a way to take this one with us. Alright. This goes to... Oh, it's already into this guy. Yeah, okay, so we can take it when we get over there. What's, uh... Ooh, if we go... What happens if we go down? Oh, there's a ladder. Okay, there's a ladder. We're good. Oh, it looks like this can move! How would we get this box anywhere to abuse? That is a good question. Huh. Alright, well I'll set this box down for now and we'll see... We'll see about this moving platform. Oh my gosh, I need to press E when I walk up to these ladders, I'm not used to doing that. Alright. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I thought it would. What is this? Oh! Oh, duh! Didn't even... Yeah, okay. I did not notice that that was there. It's turned off right now. Oh! But which side is... Is it on that side? on this side. Maybe we want this at an angle. Well, actually, let me, let me move the box into position first, right? And also, I need to get this back. So if we put this here, right, we should be able to get to the other platform, still. Yeah, okay. And, we should be able to get the box... Well, maybe. That's gonna be... we're gonna have to see. Not even sure if that's how you're supposed to do the puzzle anyway. Alright, we'll just leave the box here. I'm not sure why I actually came down here without getting this guy. There we go. Oh, that's... that's right, it retracts! Oh! Oh! I know what we're doing. Okay, uh, can I still move this when it's retracted? Let's find out. Yes, I can. Perfect. But... we need to be over there. We need to move this into position first. Come on, let me move this. We want it about here. Did I ever go in here at all? Oh! <laughs> that, uh... That might have been useful to know about. Uh, I'm gonna try and solve the puzzle without that. Screw you. <laughs> okay, so now... Alright, we need to move this into position. Oh wow, that is interesting. How aligned are we? Uh, need to go a bit further back. Eh, uh, that should do it. Alright. Yeah, that's centered enough. Close enough. Oh, duh, that wouldn't... Yeah, I can't be quick enough to do that. Okay, so we do need both. I thought... Yeah, okay. I thought that we were gonna catch the cube as it fell, but... Clearly... We just need to use that other one that I missed. Gimme.
<laughs> it centers it, interesting. Alright. Interesting, so if you press E while you're on a ladder, you just drop off instantly. Did not know that. Oh, don't, don't. There we go. That's, that's how you skin a cat. There we go. Oh, come on, let me put this in here. There we go, that works. Ta-da! I massively overcomplicated that, as usual. My purpose as the overseer of this mission is to work for the ISA. I am the ISA's feet and hands. The distance between Jupiter and Earth make it inappropriate for the ISA to directly interface with the mission directives. As my AI core is stationed on Europa, I can make decisions instantaneously about the running of the base. Got some backstory from Tom. I mean, Ava should know this, really. Interesting. So, I'm guessing there's something in here that's gonna make this all- Yes! That's exactly what I was expecting. Alright. These rooms are very cleverly designed to avoid trapping situations. It's pretty cool. I have to, I must admit. Alright, so... Now... Don't need that anymore. I can go upstairs. Whoa. That's... What's up with that? Why is it so dark there? That's where I just was! <laughs> really? Oh, duh. Did not see that. Oh, I already got both of them. I thought I only heard it click once, so there we go. How does the ISA know you're gonna make the right decisions here, when they can't communicate with us? Interestingly, I have a twin on Earth. His name is Michael. The ISA uses my twin to check firmware updates before they upload them to myself. There is a simulation of this mission on Earth, running at all times to check my expert systems. Naturally, as any modern artificial intelligence running on a quantum computer, I do also have a large amount of evolutionary algorithms at my disposal. However, they were deemed as too unreliable for general use in the mission. Why is that? Biological systems produce biological results. Messy, unpredictable solutions. Not suitable for such a mission. Interesting. What? What is? What can I? Why is this? What is this? Hello? Why can I not go through here? Whatever. Oh. Okay, so we need an energy orb to go onto that guy so that we can access it later. So I'll take that one. That allows us to switch this, which means we can take the box out. And then we can switch this, which allows us to get our orb back. And now we have two boxes! Hooray! Science! Ooh, so these can only take... Yeah, they can only take the orbs. I can't put these guys in here. Nope. So there's a whole area in there we haven't been to yet. This it makes me wonder, actually. Alright, 
we can. Oh, I did not mean to kick you. Come back. It's crazy that you can kick these things. Interesting. What happens if we stand over in this corner? Hmm. Probably should've put it in that one. That might be like a red herring, like in the Talos Principle there's a lot of times red herrings, multiple ways to do things that you didn't actually need to use at all. So let's see, now we can do this. And get this one. And we are done. Did the ISA build you, Tom? As the child of the ISA, I have been given authority aboard this station. I was designed by the ISA, and the Ashiyama Corporation, designed in California, assembled in China. But here on Europa, I constructed myself. Oh! So we took it with us. Yes, these are fizzlers. It it, it removed the Have energy from my of gun. The Turing test, Ava. It's a test to see if a computer can successfully impersonate a human. Who was that? In the original Turing test, a human judge has two conversations: one with a machine, and one with another human. They then judge which of these polite conversations is with a machine, and which is with a human. The machine being tested is said to have passed the Turing test if the judge cannot reliably tell which conversation is with a machine and which is with a human. Do you think you'd pass the Turing test? I am quite capable of polite conversation, wouldn't you say? You guys saw that, right? There was some sort of weird zombie walking up there. That's, uh, unnerving. I'm not the only one who saw that, right? Looks like we're kicking things into high gear. What is, uh... What's underneath here? Ah, uh, I thought so. Okay, and this is our further objective. For now, we want to do this. Alright. Simple stuff, simple stuff. Come on, actually go on there, thank you. Just the way back up, in case we fall. The Turing test has been criticized. Researchers claim it does not correctly test a machine's ability to think, but rather, its ability to deceive. What do you mean? Well, have you heard of the Chinese room thought experiment? Uh, no. Imagine you are in a room. In this room, you are passed Chinese sentences through a slot in the wall. Inside the room is an instruction book written in English. This instruction book tells you which Chinese words to pass back through the slot in the wall as a response. By doing so, you have a conversation in Chinese. In the Chinese room, because the responses you pass back through the door are the correct responses, the person on the other side of the door is convinced you are a native Chinese speaker. Well, they're wrong. Perhaps they are not wrong. Because with the instruction book, you are having a conversation. But the person stuck in the Chinese room is not aware of the conversation's content. 
This is the problem with the Turing test. A computer can pass the Turing test, having convinced a human they are having a polite conversation, while the computer has no idea that a conversation has taken place. What if both of the people passing Chinese words are reading from instruction books? No response. Oh, that is interesting. Okay, so what do we got going on here? We've got a basic little light bridge here, but where do we need... It was saying shift, but I remapped the key, so obviously... Ah, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's all you gotta do. Well guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you hate the sound of my voice, leave a dislike, it's up to you. And I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye!